the, the issue of children with disabilities uh, is very, very important in the region. Um, surprisingly, you find that in this region that many countries are still recording that there's only about 1.4% prevalence of children with disabilities in countries like Cambodia, countries like Indonesia, when we know that globally the average, according to the WHO, is meant to be around 10 to 15%. So they're underreporting significantly, which means that essentially they're not aware of how many children do have disabilities. So most children in this region are invisible. And one of the barriers really to addressing the needs of people with disabilities is that people see it as being very costly. But a lot of the investment need not be costly. It can be simply having ramps in school can make schools accessible to people, etc. And the other thing is the, the returns from the investment. If you invest in people with disabilities, they become active members of society. They contribute towards the economy. In terms of what we're trying to do to respond to the needs of children with disabilities in the region, first of all, we give it top priority at the, at the regional level. We had a very important workshop in, in Cambodia in November, following on from a regional review that we did on the, um, the rights of children with disability. Uh, the main thrust is really trying to improve the data so we know who these children are, we know where the children are. Um, another major thrust is capacity development, which means things like the training of teachers so that they can, they can uh, support inclusive education. Um, we have some very interesting examples at the country level of uh, different initiatives such as in Papua New Guinea moving away from special education towards inclusive education. Um, another factor which, um, which also reinforces the, uh, the problems that people with disability can have is the fact that they're living in remote areas. And there's a very good example of that is um, a young girl, a 13 year old girl called Uyanga in northern Mongolia who was born with brain damage and learning disabilities also in impaired vision and speaking difficulties. So it's very difficult for her local school which is not very well resourced to actually cater for all those needs. However UNICEF ensured that Uyanga's needs could be addressed within the local community. So I think that's a very good example of inclusion. I think to summarise, I think our aspiration in the region is to really drive this equity agenda across all the different areas where we work and when we're looking at education for example to make sure that all these children, all these invisible children become visible and after they become visible that they also come to school and they get an appropriate kind of education so that people with disabilities are properly integrated within society and I think this is really achievable within this region.